There comes a time in every programmer's life when it's time to break out of a loop. There are two basic things you'll need to be able to do. You either want to break out of the loop entirely and go on to something else, or you may want to just skip the rest of the code for this one time through the loop and get on with the next time through. Java provides two keywords to do this. The keyword break will jump out of the loop altogether, and the keyword continue will skip to the bottom of the loop and start over. You've seen how the break keyword is used to jump out of a switch case statement, but it also works in a for loop, a while loop, or a do loop. Here's a simple example. This program contains a simple for loop with a counter that runs from 0 to 10. Inside the loop, a test is made to determine whether the value is 4, and if it is, a continue statement is executed. This means that when i is 4, the program jumps to the bottom of the loop and gets on with the next number. Another test is made to determine whether the value is 8. If it is, a break statement is executed, and the flow jumps completely out of the loop. Now, notice that the continue and break statements are both inside an if block. This makes no difference whatsoever. Break and continue completely ignore if. They only work with for, do, while, and switch. Here's the output from running this program. Each time through the loop, the loop counter is printed. However, the number 4 is not printed because, with the counter 4, a continue statement is executed and the code jumps around the call to the display method. Also, nothing larger than 7 is displayed because once the value reaches 8, the loop is abandoned with a break statement. Now, it's common to have one loop nested inside another. In this case, the break and continue commands only affect the inner loop. If you want them to work with an outer loop, you have to tell them which outer loop you're talking about. Here's a program with a three-dimensional array and three loops, one inside the other, that scan through the array looking for a match on a specific value. The array was initialized to hold that value at only one location. But look right here. This is a name followed by a colon. It's a label. You can use this label on a break or a continue statement to specify which loop should be continued or broken. Now, here is the break statement that breaks out of the outer loop. Of course, this breaks the inner loop, too, but if no label were on the break statement, only the innermost loop would be broken. Now, notice what happens here. After the nested loops have finished, the three loop counter values are printed. If the loops had been allowed to complete, all three values would be 10, because that's what the loops count up to. But in this case, the loops were all abandoned in mid-count, so the loop counter values are all left set to their values at the point of the break. Here, let me show you. And here are the three values. All three loops were broken at the same time, so the values were left where they were when the loops broke. Now, you can actually put the label on any statement and use the break statement to jump to it, but it doesn't always do what you'd expect, or even like. If you want to know exactly how this thing acts, you should do some experimentation. Try using different labels in different places and see what happens. But watch out. What you're dealing with here is a go-to by another name, and that sort of thing can be used to write some very confusing code.